Hey guys, welcome back to Medieval Dynasty. Yes, I'm here again. And I did the beginner's tips recently, and now I'm going to do the intermediate tips, because I feel like I'm mid-game. You can see my settlement here. There's so much to learn and absorb with this very intriguing and gripping game. So, let's get started. Tip 1. The crossbow is the best weapon. I love it. You get your bolts, they're easy to make. Hold the right mouse button down and you can aim at your opponent. But they're very difficult to make. You don't get the skills until end game really. That's because it's available on Smithy 3. Well, the the uh, the iron crossbow is and there you only you really need the more kind of advanced crossbows for them to last any length of time. The wooden crossbow you get on Smithy 2, which I haven't got to yet incidentally, is you know, it's mere, it's kind of, it, it doesn't last that long. The iron one lasts much longer. Iron tools and iron weapons last much longer. That's something you you probably already realise. But, how do I get my hands on an iron crossbow? I scout around for bandit camps that are armed with crossbows. And I take them out. It's the best way. As you head around the map, and the, the bandit camps will randomly spawn in different, in different allocated spots you can get your hands on a crossbow. That is always a priority in my mind. It is the best hunting weapon. Headshots do a great amount of damage. Get yourself one of these crossbows. Tip two. Assigning tasks is vital. Now, in the beginning, you won't really know what this is because it's all to do with having a population in your settlement. If you click the tab and go to management at the top, what you'll get is a list of people. Now I happen to have a fair few um, people living in my settlement and they all have different tasks. Now it's easy enough to assign a task. You click on the person and you, you go down to workplace and you click on the space there and you can slot it into a building. But the thing that is the next level is assigning tasks at buildings. And it's, you have to do that, basically, if you want them to be able to do anything. So if we click on the well here, for example, we have um, the worker here. He's a water carrier, Jarrow. And at the top of this well screen on the right-hand side, there's a magnifying glass. There's a hammer with a circle, with an arrow in a circle. If you click on that, this is your task. And you'll get a list of things that you can do here. Select your task, give it a percentage, decide on how, how intensely you want your workers to slog and then apply it. And each building has a different set of tasks you can apply and some of these will become unlocked as you progress. So let's have a look at the excavation shed. It also lists the tools here. If you click on the hammer with the circle, you can see here I've got them working on 25% extracting clay, limestone and straw. Don't need stone at the moment because I haven't built any stone walls as yet but that will no doubt come as I go towards end game. So don't forget assigning task is important and it's, it's a couple of tabs in before you get to that point. Tip 3 follows on from tip 2. Let's go back into the management panel. At the top here management and you get an overview. If you click on buildings, it comes up with the people that you have in your settlement first. If you then click on the barn or the house on the left hand tab here, you get to see, as we just talked about, your different buildings. Sometimes, and you can see here, the fishing hut, we have status no tool. You get a little red symbol. And then back on the main screen at the top left hand corner, you get a little anvil. And that means that there's something wrong, something needs to be sorted. In this particular situation, they don't have a knife or a fishing spear. So we're short. And in fact, I need to make some fishing spears. What I would then do is go and put them in the toolbox, which is associated with that building. It just They have quicker access to it. They will use it from there. And they will then carry on with the tasks that you set them, the assignments that we talked about in the last tip. So when we go back to our building menu, you can see we've got a hunting lodge here, 
also has no tool no knife so I need to go and sort that out and put a knife in that location if I if these workers can carry on then they will then carry on with their work if they have their tool keep an eye on that and that if you go back here as well the herbalist hut I don't have a person there working in that one it's given me a little person red person as the status if we look down here you can also see the sewing hut it doesn't have any resources that it needs so I need to put some leather and some fur in there so that it can make fur shoes tip four it's a bit like the crossbow tip this one you need a large backpack and a large pouch if we go to my inventory here you could see that I have equipped a large pouch and a probably gone past it simple large backpack dramatically increases the amount you can carry plus 40 kilograms for that one and plus 10 kilograms for this one now if you go to technology and have a look at sewing hut you can see that it takes a while again to be able to get access to these backpacks and in fact sewing hut is way down the list simple large backpack costs 2000 coins as well the fact of the matter is you need this to really be efficient in game especially when you start building larger structures and you want to carry lots of things the only way that I've found to be able to do that is by searching the map and I really enjoy doing it but I found large pouches large backpacks out in the wilderness this is where you need to be to get your backpack so that you can then carry enough stuff to then make it worthwhile starting to build more things because going backwards and forwards all the time with only a small capacity in your backpack isn't very productive in fact it can be a bit demoralizing tip five within my settlement it's become apparent that the population want social spaces where they can meet and discuss and you know maybe even fall in love and you can hear we have children in the settlement in fact there he is there a newborn so what I do is I put benches around torches that I built and what you find is they will come and sit here and you uh, you see them chatting and uh, you know who knows what they're talking about tip six I found having the resources storage area or building in the center of the settlement is really handy inside you've got your chest with this massive 2000 capacity this is a second this is an upgraded resources storage and all your workers will dump their products in this space so that might be logs seeds um, shoes door which I've made across at the barn um, it feathers all things like that flax seed their fur shoes they've dumped it here uh, as a result of their activities and the tasks that you set them and if it's central then it saves you running across one to one side of the settlement and then running all the way back you can just run to the middle and then distribute it to where you need it tip seven it can be quite frustrating cooking if we access the cauldron here have a look at the soups that I have access to I have selected stew because you can make it with just carrots and meat obviously you need to make the bowls now if you go along the salted meat and carrot salt meat takes another it has another process and although you get more out of this type of stew I find by selecting one that's a simpler simpler one like carrots I can then grow lots of carrots out in one of my fields go out and do some hunting with my crossbow easily kill four deer in four minutes and bring back a load of meat pick all my carrots you get a lot of carrots for your seeds and then I make some stews these stews go down well you can you get points for making them and it's quite frustrating the amount of now of technology you need to upgrade to some of these higher level stews like some of these this uh, not enough technology production 363 slash 1500 you've got to have 1500 technology to be able to make this vegetable soup that is quite a way off for me and you're not really going to spend a huge amount of time 
cooking to get that tech up so you can make those stews so i tend to tailor my my crops to one type of food and another thing as well if you make a food like this it sells quite well in the market if i have 50 stew i can sell it for a thousand coin up at the market which is really vital when it comes around to spring when you're paying your taxes tip eight it's mere fluke that i happen to build my settlement next to some clay pits i didn't know how rare they were at the time now you can run around the map and not find any of these and then suddenly you'll spring you'll discover one tucked away in a ridge somewhere but if you have one near you can set your guys to work you can see here this guy's digging away and this this lady she's digging away and she will then go and dump that in the resources store and you will find that you've got a little supply of clay but also because the clay renews every season you can go and dig it up yourself and you're only a short way away from your barn where you can plop it in in the chest there and if you set up your your tasks correctly you can have them making some some daub for your buildings for the insulation if you put some straw in there as well clay and straw make the daub which you then apply to the outside of the buildings tip nine when exploring bandit camps i find and i play in third person mostly if you scroll the wheel and go into first person you can see things a lot more easily so there's small things that you perhaps might not have noticed it's not the best example sometimes you've got tents you want to be able to see inside the tent but I definitely would miss things if I didn't scroll in and take a closer look at what's around the fireplace tip 10 at the end of a season so we just had winter finish you may well get a narrative screen you don't always sometimes you do and it will give you options here I've only got one options one option no restrictions I've got rats basically but sometimes it may be that there's a merchant or possibility to buy something so at the end of the season it's worth making sure you have some coin in your purse in your inventory a thousand two thousand coin and then you can buy the better option so always remember at the end of the season try and have some money in your coffers tip 11 now this one goes back to the crossbow if you load your crossbow and then hold down the right mouse button you can zoom okay now this is part of aiming you would see this but it's handy to have it loaded so you can zoom in to different locations if you're looking say to try and spot a wolf or a bison whatever they're called in the wilderness yeah it's one of the only ways you can really zoom in and it's not something you can do ordinarily if you haven't got a loaded weapon just ready now if you put the crossbow away and then grab the crossbow out again it's not loaded anymore you still got that slow motion where you load the bow but then you'll get your zoom back I find it very handy as I'm running around to have the crossbow loaded so I can zoom in on different spots if I need to especially with the tracking sense there as well I can hunt much more efficiently tip 12 you can see my settlement down there well up here in the forest I have placed the wood shed in fact I've got a couple placed around I'll show you the other one in a sec wood sheds need to be placed near trees because this is the thing that they harvest you also need to make sure you've got some axes in there I'm going to put a couple more in here and so they can then go out and cut logs and provide for the village but they need to be within a certain radius I can't remember exactly what it is but they need to be near trees so although you will have one in the settlement to begin with I've got a board down here you can see over there I've got another one in amongst a group of trees so that he can get on with his job cut trees down so they need to be you need to place your woodsheds in the forest but close to your settlement because they've got to travel here each day so you don't want them heading off into the wilderness somewhere 
In tip 13, there's absolutely no reason why you can't have two of the same type of building. To sustain the population in my village, I need two wells being operated by two water carriers. You can see they're at it here. I don't know what she's up to. But for the water skins to be filled, if we go to the management section here, if we go um, to wells, go into wells, look at the um, product, the assignments. I've got water skins being filled 55% by this particular person because otherwise you start getting little warnings in the top left hand of the screen showing drops of water because people are thirsty. So you may need to double up on buildings to be able to provide enough resources for your village. Tip 14. Probably one of the items that I found myself most short of as I've played through the game is linen thread. Use it to make lots of things including fishing spears for example and there's not a lot of it around at the beginning. Even when you search around you find flax stalks which you use to make um, linen thread from and there's only a few maybe at a wagon or you can't buy them in a town that's always an option but I always recommend getting as many flax fields going as possible so that you can produce the flax stalk and then you can make your linen down at your sewing hut. So you can see I'm laying out some flax fields at the top of my settlement here. Really recommend you focus in and get those fields going. Tip 15. My wife in the game is one of the hunters. I've assigned her to that task and she hangs out obviously here when she's working or not working as the case maybe as you can see here. Now a little thing you can do is with your partner you Hello. can click on it and you can ask how's our little kingdom doing and she'll give you advice about what you need to do in the game so for example buildings in the settlement need repair so I need to go and check that you can click it again the peasants require more crafting materials and again that's all for now and she had pre previously said we need more tools and she gives you these little updates and if you can satisfy those then you're obviously your settlement's going to be better off so this is a handy little thing to have here tip 16 mines obviously a necessity you need to mine copper and tin to make your bronze and you'll get some iron as well thrown in occasionally now this mine is located here on the map just to the northeast of Branica I'll remove the waypoint so you can see there's a little L shaped upside down L shaped in the location just off the road north of the road and the river just down below it there. Now this particular mine is quite close to where um, where where I set up which is near the starting town and it's actually a safer map it's a safer mine to go to because there are no bears here and there are bears at the other mine Tip 17. There are certain locations that bandit camps spawn in. Sometimes they'll spawn with or without their bandits. Um, if you're lucky enough to find a bandit camp that is empty, not that it really matters too much if the bandits are there because they're quite easy to kill, you can just loot it, take what's there. As I say, zoom in again. You can zoom in and it's much easier. Now, I've already looted a lot of what's in this camp but you can often find these empty and they will be full of loot which is pretty amazing and it's these plateaus there are little spots that are free of trees in forests for example or by waterfalls just get used to where they are and you can check them as you're hunting and gathering fur and leather and meat and you can check these spots and see if you've got yourself some very valuable loot so just bear in mind where those are and as you're running around just check them and you'll get used to that as you get into the game more tip 18 set yourself up with a product that one of your guys one of your population can make for you because when spring comes around you've got to pay your taxes and having a stock of items to sell 
at the market at the village is obviously very beneficial. So what I do is, for example, uh, and it depends on the level that you're at because there are only certain technologies available to you. And currently, technology level, um, we want to go to sewing hut here. I'm at sewing hut one. And I've purchased fur shoes and shoes. Now for shoes you need 12 leather. For fur shoes you need fur and 8 leather. If we go to management and have a look at my sewing hut here, you can see I've set it up to make small pouches, which is leather, and sticks. Um, I've set it up to make shoes here which is leather 50% so over time they will deposit shoes into the resources barn and I can then grab those and sell them now to make sure that they can do that I obviously need to provide leather and in here you can see I've got some leather that they can use to make the shoes and the pouches as well as the sticks to make the pouches and the leather is really quite an easy one to find because you get quite a bit from deer, and moose and boar and they're the things that are quite close to you. So depending on what level you are, set yourself up with a resource that will end up in your resources barn and then you can sell that on. So they've got a little industry going while you're out and about doing your thing and doing some searching and all that sort of thing. Tip 19. When you've built your house there are numerous options to decorate it and this helps raise the morale of your population you can add things like if you go if you click on the uh, area like the floor for example you get slots where you can put rugs at the moment I've got a boar fur rug and a badger fur rug I've got three more slots in this large house where I can place rugs you can also click on the wooden attic and there are hanging slots. I've got these straw himeli, if that's how you say it, they're straw hanging thing already in one of the slots and I haven't actually got any other current decoration going on there. It's really a, a positive way of increasing the aesthetic values of your population. These smaller houses have less slots. You can see here one less slot. So the bigger the house the more slots you get and um, it just generally increases the population's happiness which is really key because that also affects how quickly and efficiently they work in the fields tip 20 at the end of the day or the season i'll offload all my heavy items back at the village and i'll head out to a mine or somewhere where i need to gather something heavy and i will fill my pockets with uh, the, the ore to the point where I can hardly move. In fact, talking about the metal deposits, early game, in fact, you know, up until mid game even, you're not going to be have access to bronze tools because it takes quite a while. Technology level here, if we look, it takes a while to get to Smithy 2 to get your bronze tools because you need tin and copper to make the bronze so if you if you can only make copper tools then you may as well just collect copper so it's the end of the day I am filling my pockets with as much copper as I can because I can make copper tools as well from all my guys and I will just keep doing this and I will fill my pockets with copper, drop all the stone as I go so that I can put more copper ore in there then eventually it will fade it's the new season or the next day and all of the ore that I mined is still on my person I've teleported back to my house it obviously needs repairs and I can dump that anywhere I like change it into do up to bars and this way you can collect heavy stuff at the end of the day and just teleport back to the location guys that's the final tip 20 tips 
for intermediate players. So I hope you found these useful. If you did, hit the thumbs up. If you've got any comments, add them in down below. If you're not subbed already, it'd be awesome if you could. There's going to be more content like this on my channel. There's already hundreds of videos on my channel with loads of interesting content if you want to check that out as well. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon.